All right, in this video, I will share with you a true story that happened in uh, Dubai, UAE. Obviously, I have to hide the details, but it's a story of rags to riches and finally to rags. Uh, see if it adds any value to you and let me know your thoughts. True story. Okay, this is a South Indian guy who came from India and yeah, you know, he wanted to move to Dubai and all that. So obviously when you search on YouTube or you search on Quora or you search online, Dubai, the thing you always get somewhere down the line, you'll get my article, my videos or what I have to say. And uh, he liked my style of communication and he is too busy to take down notes and strategize. And uh, he decided to come to UAE to try his luck. Came to UAE. Only thing which he didn't do was obviously have a strategy in mind. He didn't take any coaching, nothing, only from online. So he found it a little difficult to get a job. And obviously those days, you're talking of almost 10, 12 years ago, whatever, or 15, whatever. Um, you know, Dubai was a different place. It was not offering you these visas, gold visa, work visa, tourist visa, extended visa, work, you know, employ, you know, search for a job visa. So it was very tough. And he had sold a uh, lot of his savings, belongings, whatever to move to Dubai. And now his clock was ticking and he was desperate. And out of the desperation, he contacted me and said, please, can you help me? I'm not getting a job. I told him what are my service charges, whatever. He paid it. So helped him with the resume rebrand, interview coaching and uh, strategy. Uh, he didn't. He got a job, but it was not like a wow job. Uh, being a software developer, he got, uh, I think, in the range of 1500 to 2000 dollars. Okay, US dollars. He wanted something much more than that, but I told him just grab whatever you can for time being. After he got the job and all that, he was grateful, but he told me he wanted to earn more. So he booked another session and uh, I taught him how to go about getting extra money through freelancing. And uh, he was a great student he would really learn and so he started freelancing and that is how he started to make money i taught him the loopholes of the system where you can make money how without having much expense and because this guy was incredibly proactive he would follow my template and actually approach companies if you would see anywhere he would approach the decision maker and propose the solution until one day he went to this i have to be sensitive how i say this but um, he approached this semi-government business rich emirati family very rich very powerful emirati family uh, part of the government whatever business i can't give you specifics <laughs> he went there to get a service and uh, there you know he found out that the software which was processing the information was kind of buggy slow and was taking time not efficient not proper and he had a good idea in mind he had a good idea good in mind that he would make it better so obviously he was kind of curious he followed my template once again uh, and i'm proudly saying it because it does work and he approached straight away approached the decision maker very highly educated emirati guy sophisticated studied in uk top notch very well spoken very humble and he was amused at this south indian guy normal average looking guy he is actually proposing to him to improve his software process and all that which you know you subcontract to a you know big company and what he told them is i will if you can show me what the software is and how it works and everything i will give you a much better solution so he asked him how much and he Proposed to him like uh, per hour rate for working and uh, once he completed the project, this is X amount, which was substantially high. So he said, fine, if you can do it, I'll be impressed. Let's see you do it. And he said, if it doesn't work, fine. I've taken a gamble on you. <clears throat> so he had taken uh, for three months or six months, whatever. It didn't, he was not able to deliver within six months. It almost went to nearly, nearly eight months to a year. But finally he delivered the project and after he delivered, it was so good what he delivered. The Emirati guy, powerful rich guy, not only paid him what promised, he actually gave him one million dirhams, one million. Okay, he gave it to him. And he said, um, you just absolutely amazing, you know, great. So he was very happy. Of course, if you're on one million men, come on, who wouldn't be happy? And this is where, you know, South Indians have this trait, you know, once they get money, they want to start a business. And he always had this thing of starting business, which he, you know, exhibited by being a freelancer. And <laughs> before you know it, he registered a free zone company, which provided the same service. And, you know, he resigned from that company, whatever. And uh, he started his own business. And this business caught on and made so much money so 
you know, so many contracts, whatever. Once again, the very same guy, that same Emirati guy, he decided to buy out his company. He said, I'm really impressed in this thing. I'll offer you, you know, because he was like, he's doing very well. And he had put systems in place, people in place. And I think he made around, I think, 12 million or 13 million or more than that, say roughly 15 million. So from thousand dollars, 1 million dirhams, 10, 15, whatever million. And now he was a millionaire. His dream had come true. And so now what do you do? You have multiple choices. Either you can retire, put the money in the bank, enjoy the interest, go back, back to your country, um, start another small venture. He, how I know all this? He booked my service. He booked my service and he asked me, and he was kind enough to give me a tip, which I don't mind any day. Give me a little bonus, whatever. So I was, I genuinely wanted him to succeed. But this is where, you know, when you start getting too much money, too much success, too much confidence, it goes to your head sometimes. And this is where it went to his head. And uh, he decided that he was going to start another business. I cautioned him on this because I told him, see, listen, you got lucky once, you got lucky twice. You cannot keep getting lucky. And obviously, every time he took a risk, he took a much bigger risk. And I told him, see, listen, the bigger the risk, the bigger you are, the harder you fall. Take a small risk. But, um, you know, when you are making money and you're enjoying success, why should you aim small when you get so big? And so I gave him the advice. I gave him whether he liked it or not, that's up to him. Whether he followed it or not, up to him. So he went on. After which I didn't hear from him for quite some time. It was only after, I think, I think four or five years or something. <coughs> He got in touch with me again and I didn't remember who he is here for the life of me. I didn't because I was not in touch with him. And finally he told me, you know, there's that. And I was like, ah, it's you, you know. And then I asked him, how's it going and all that. And uh, to my not so surprised, he had lost everything. What had happened was, you know, he had created another business. And not only that, he created multiple businesses, not just one. Because his logic was, I created one business, I made 10 million. So now if I create 10 businesses, I can make 100 million, you know. Very simple logic, but it doesn't work that way. He not only created multiple businesses, which I told him not to, he had multiple partners, which I told him not to. He had, uh, you know, taken investors on board and borrowed money, which I told him not to. He literally took all the possible risks in the world, invested in stuff he knew nothing about, from interior decoration to retail, sorry, to, uh, you know, real estate to stocks, shares, whatever, technology, AI, everything not that ai that we have now you know he just thought he couldn't fail he just thought that it is impossible for him to fail because after all he was the one who generated all this sadly it didn't work out that way and it was only after he lost everything did he realize that he got lucky he was just the right guy at the right place at the right time and he was lucky and um, it was a tough pill to swallow and he realized this way too late he realized it only after his he lost everything and when he had to pay creditors and sell off the property and everything that he purchased in India, he realized now he was in deep trouble. And that is where, you know, people come to me only when they are in trouble, right? So he approached me once again and said, uh, I'd like to book your services and, you know, and this time he said, I asked him, so what, do you want to take another business? He said, he said I, I really don't have what it takes. And, you know, he had... We are speaking on video. I just forgot to tell you this. When I saw him the first time, he looked like smart and young and black hair and looked amazing. When I saw him again, this time he was completely wrinkles and white hair. He was losing hair. He looked so stressed out. His health was also not good. He was a heavy smoker, heavy drinker because of all the stress and he was in a bad state. Yeah. And now from being a $1,500 to $2,000 employee, after all these years, he had to he had no other option but to go back to being $1,500, $2,000 employee. Thankfully, he didn't have to start from there. But he ended up getting, uh, I think, uh, $3,000 or $4,000 job. Uh, but it's a far cry from that million that he made. You know, And I'll tell you, even though he got, okay, compared to $1,500, whatever, now he's getting $4,000, $5,000, whatever. Still, he was making his money at the side as a freelancer. But it was not like before. And I'll tell you, once you are at that high where you have tasted what is 1 million or 10 million or whatever. For you to go down to that, he, he it was all over his face that he was depressed. And he just lost his, that enthusiasm, the zest for life. And he was completely a broken man. Yeah. Completely a broken man. And where once upon a time he, you know, he, had he been smart, had he stopped at that 10 million or 15 million, whatever he had, he could retire for the rest of his life and just live off the interest. But uh, I guess, I don't know if you can call it greed or ambition or whatever. He decided to go the Elon Musk way, put everything and, you know, take a gamble. And because he did that, I really felt sorry.
sorry for him really and uh, i lost i lost uh, i lost in he didn't keep in touch after that he decided to migrate to some other country in the west which again once again i'll not tell you where but it was never the same and uh, i think he finally moved abroad to get a citizenship but the salary that he got paid there was obviously lower than what he was getting so he had to start from scratch all over again and now i think he nearly must be around must be in his 40s and uh, just imagine where he could have had 10 15 million in the bank and today he has only 50000 60000 100000 see the difference say so, yeah. anyway i don't know what moral of the story you'll get from this i don't know what life lessons you can get you can tell me but the only one i can leave you with is sometimes you should not believe in your own hype you should not believe that you're invincible you should not believe that oh it's not because of luck it's because of my genius my hard work my vision my talent uh, when your luck runs out no anyway this is what i wanted to share with you let me know your thoughts it's sometimes i i really feel bad for the guy but this is the reality of life and this is not stuff that you'll read about online because we always like to hear the happily ever after story he made his millions and sailed off into the sunset is sometimes a reality that you should also know about anyway this is what i wanted to share with you let me know your thoughts in the comments below good bad ugly love to hear from you it's me sanyu